Hi there, welcome to our exam AZ-900 Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 18 of 50, Azure AI Products. My name's Tim Warner. Our objective today begins at the functional group, Describe Core Solutions and Azure Management Tools, proceeds into Describe Core Solutions available on Azure, describe the benefits and usage of the following products, Azure Machine Learning, Azure Cognitive Services, and Azure Bot Service. Yes, it's all about artificial intelligence today. And as you can see on the right, if you're joining the study guide from this episode, I make the entire table of contents available in an Excel workbook you can download at timw.info forward slash AZ900. I'm pulling these objectives directly from Microsoft's AZ900 objective domain, incorporating the latest and greatest 2020 updates. Now, preliminarily, I want to make sure you understand what is meant by artificial intelligence and its related term machine learning. These terms are often abbreviated AI and ML, respectively. Now, artificial intelligence is defined as a computer science subfield or specialty that deals with how machines can imitate human intelligence. So whereas AI is a more general term, ML is an application of artificial intelligence in which machine learning can be looked at as a data science technique that allows computers to forecast future outcomes. There's a lot of mathematics involved with machine learning in training what's called a model. You'll normally want to have a large amount of source data, and then you will apply various well-known mathematical algorithms to that data. And the idea is you want to fit the appropriate algorithm to your data such that you see that the computer, in this case, in Azure machine learning, you're looking at a fleet of virtual machines, but we'll get to that in a second, but that the machine learning engine will then be able to ideally make accurate predictions on unknown new data based on all of the training that you've undergone with that machine learning platform on past data. Does that make sense? Well, let's proceed and see if it makes more sense yet. There's a reason why data scientists and AI engineers earn the big bucks. First in Azure, we have the Azure Machine Learning, or AML product. Now, this can get a little confusing because, like many things in Azure, the product has undergone a little bit of rebranding, revitalization. There is an original Azure Machine Learning Studio product that was good, but a little bit too proprietary, I think Microsoft found. So now we have the Azure Machine Learning, or AML, which is a cloud-hosted environment for both developers and data science professionals. There's something for everyone here, at least that's the general idea. In addition to using the Azure Machine Learning product interactively, and there's actually a graphical ML training wizard where you can drag and drop different elements. It's very, very slick, as a matter of fact. There's even AML has an auto ML feature where you can take your source data and then just turn Azure Machine Learning loose on it, and it will try out a bunch of different algorithms and report back on which ones fit the data best as far as accurately giving you a prediction. Isn't that awesome? That means that you can come into the Azure Machine Learning product without even necessarily having AI engineer experience. It's a really cool product. You can see on the right side of this slide that the model building workflow using AML is that you train your model until it's functioning the way that you want it to. You package and validate it, and then you can deploy the model in a number of different ways. Normally, you'll deploy it as a web service and then expose that web service as what's called an application programming interface or API. And then you connect your application to that back end that runs in Azure and monitor the results over time. As a quick real-world application, as of this recording in April 2020, we're going through quarantine with this COVID-19 pandemic. We could use, and I guarantee there are people who have already built models using AML that takes inputs like maybe your symptoms, where you live in the world, etc., and the machine learning engine can make a prediction on how susceptible you are to the virus, let's say. That's just an example that comes off the top of my head. At the end of this lesson, I'll give you links as I normally do to the documentation. You'll want to look into the quick starts and tutorials if you're interested in going further. There's lots and lots of open source data sets and tutorials that give you real hands-on practical understanding of how you can use ML in general and Azure machine learning in particular. Lastly, as we would expect in an Azure-hosted product, we have lots and lots of integrations. 
First of all, Microsoft understands that people may want to use Azure Machine Learning and take advantage of all of Microsoft's cloud-hosted hyperscale and compute clustering and all of this, but they want to use their existing tools. They don't want to be forced to use, say, the .NET framework in Microsoft programming languages. So AML has first-class support for Python and R. Those are two of the most popular programming languages for machine learning and artificial intelligence. Another way that these data scientists and AI engineers work is they like to run their code and document their code and even present their code and share code in the context of a Jupyter notebook. Jupyter is an open source platform. It's a specialized web application that does just that. It allows you to host your full experiments and present them in different ways to different people. You might want to show all of your work to fellow data scientists, but you won't only want to show results and charts and graphs to your business leaders. You see what I mean? And lastly, as you would expect, we've got full integration with Azure Resource Manager, which means you're using, as I said, virtual machines as the underlying compute layer. As a matter of fact, it goes beyond that. Azure Machine Learning can take advantage of Docker containers to give you even more dynamic scale at the compute layer. And you've got role-based access control and monitoring and Azure policy, et cetera, et cetera. Next, we have Azure Cognitive Services. Now, Cognitive Services is more of a software as a service or SaaS application. With Azure Machine Learning, the idea is that you can start from scratch with your source data training an ML model and then taking it through the deployment and maintenance lifecycle. But Cog Services is cool because there's a whole bunch of APIs that are ready for your developers to just tap into using the programming languages of their choice. Okay, so COG services is a bunch of APIs and also SDKs. That stands for Software Development Kit. They're going to be libraries that your developers can plug into their environment and start using COG services in their source code. Some examples of some of those cognitive services pre-baked SaaS APIs are, for example, the Computer Vision API, which is used for image recognition, the Face API for facial recognition, and the Speech API, which can do text-to-speech and speech-to-text, and the Lewis Language Understanding Service blends in perfectly into the third and final service that we're looking at today. And that is the Azure Bot Service and the associated Azure Bot Framework. An Azure Bot is simply an application component with human-like interactions. As you can see at the bottom of this slide, I have a representative workflow that incorporates the Azure Bot service and Azure Framework, Azure Bot Framework. For example, in step one, a user from their mobile device taps into your application. Maybe it's an authenticated application, not public, so they would authenticate through Azure Active Directory Business to Consumer, B2C, and even more to the point, they may be able to reuse their social login, their Facebook or their Twitter ID to create an account with your app. At that point, perhaps they're confronted with an Azure App Service app or API that's backed by the Azure Bot Service. And perhaps the user can issue commands just with free text or they can use their voice. It really doesn't matter. The Cognitive Services APIs are already there, already trained, already raring to go, as it were. And then you've got this back and forth human-like interaction, you've heard of a chat bot, I'm sure, between the customer and this bot backend. Four in this slide shows the Lewis, the language understanding, where the user can, based on where they are in the world, there's language localization. It doesn't have to be just, for example, English, but in their language of comfort and choice, they're able to even use more slang or non-formal, informal language. I mean, nowadays it's hard to avoid meeting a bot. If you carry an iPhone, you've got Siri. If you use the Amazon devices, the Echoes, you've got the Alexa platform. Google has, I think it's called Google Voice. And chances are, if you call your healthcare professional, you might be dealing with a bot or your pharmacy. It's pretty standard nowadays. And the Azure Bot Service and the underlying bot framework SDKs will save your developers a lot of time in building those solutions. Let me take you into a demo. I'm just going to show you just a quick tour of using the bot service in Azure. Okay, in this brief demo, 
I'm going to just give you the highest level touch points of using the Azure bot service and bot framework. Now this gets totally into developer land. So if you're not a developer and or you have no interest in becoming a developer, don't worry about the details. First of all, on this workstation, you see that I'm running Visual Studio. Now nowadays, Visual Studio is applicable. It's an IDE or an integrated development environment. It's applicable not only to honest to goodness application developers, but also to special in terms of Azure infrastructure people because you can do just about any kind of Azure deployment including of course working with Azure Resource Manager templates from this environment. Now lastly note that you can install Visual Studio 2019 Community Edition for fun and for free which makes the tool even more accessible and lastly I know I sound like an advertisement but I'm genuinely passionate about this subject. Visual Studio 2019 Community is available for both Windows which you'd expect and also Mac OS, which you might not. So what I did here is I went to File New and I created a new project. I can't actually go in there now because I'm currently running a project. And I just was going to show you that when you install Visual Studio 2019 with the Azure workload, it lights up all of the support for Azure. And there's some additional SDK pieces that you have to download to work with the Azure bot service, but it's not too bad. I'm actually running a sample bot project that I got from the Azure documentation. So once again, in fact, let me just show you because I keep repeating it so often. Let me show you exactly what I did. I did a Google search for Azure bot service quick start and then I added docs and you can see the shortcut showing up in my edge history right here create a bot with the bot framework SDK for .NET the Microsoft documentation if you're not aware of this is outstanding it's at docs.microsoft.com forward slash Azure and I want you to see up here see this pencil this means that all of the docs are open sourced at github which means that you or anybody else can actually edit these docs these are things like correcting mistakes I hope you don't find any adding to the documentation Maybe you have a great example of an illustration or an example or a graphic. Just wanted to give a shout out to the docs. And as you can see, under the Azure Bot Service documentation, there's normally or almost always an overview that gives you the general introduction. And then there'll be a section on quick starts. These are step-by-step -step tutorials that give you everything you need to know, including prerequisites to complete those tasks. So if you're a self-paced learner, you really can't beat it. So what I've done is I've created the bot project in Visual Studio. I downloaded the source code directly from the Microsoft website and just ran it. I'm not much of a developer myself, at least not today. And that's standing up the API or the application programming interface to actually consume and use the bot. I downloaded another free product from Microsoft called the Bot Framework Emulator that you see here. What you're going to see as a general pattern when you work with Azure development is that you'll want to do as much as you can locally. Because, of course, in a public cloud, you're charged for consumption, aren't you? Your developers may be doing a lot more development and testing than just deploying to production. So, for example, in Visual Studio, when you debug something like a bot service project, it stands up a website, but it's running under local host, which is on your own system here. You can see this Echo Bot test page. It says localhost colon 3978. So I'm running this as a local web server, and I can connect to this local URL from the bot simulator, which again, or bot emulator, excuse me, that I downloaded from the Microsoft download gallery. Now the whole purpose specifically of this sample project, it creates what's called an Echo Bot which is a conversational bot or a chat bot that you would normally see displayed on a website. You ever go to a website and then a little pop-up shows up that says, hi, may I help you? And you might be wondering if that's a human being. There's a chance it is, but probably 99% it's a bot. And you can say, for instance, how do I create an account? Whatever. You use natural language and you submit that chat message just as if you were doing so to a human being. And then we've got, in our case, the Azure backend being able to interpret those statements using language understanding and in the Lewis libraries and being able to give you responses and direct you to spots on the website. Again, the idea is human-like interaction, even though it's happening in a compute framework. We're not seeing any actual conversation in this Echo Bot. The reason why it's called an Echo Bot is that it simply echoes back whatever you say. 
So it's just more or less a proof of concept. But I hope it was useful for you to see some of the behind the curtain details of building a bot application that will run in Microsoft Azure. For learning resources, these are all links that go into the Azure Docs. Again, I encourage you to dive in there, especially if you're already in a technical role. There's some fantastic stuff in here. For Azure Machine Learning, go to timw.info forward slash AI1. For COG services, go to timw.info forward slash AI2. And for bot service, go to timw.info, wait for it, AI3. Thanks so much for joining me, as always. This is a particularly cool topic. I hope you enjoyed it half as much as I did. I'd love your feedback on the series. You can leave it right here on YouTube or find me on Twitter, Tech Trainer Tim. My plural site work is at timw.info forward slash ps. My website is techtrainertim.com. Take good care. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks a lot.